All right, welcome everyone to day three of Nightscope's first ever Innovation Week. Got a couple of troublemakers here with me. Uh, Aaron Lenhart, who is our Executive Vice President and Chief Design Officer. He also reads Minds. We'll talk about that in a moment. And Sapreet, you met uh, a little bit earlier in the week. He was the, uh, I guess still is, the K5 lead engineer and then decided that he's going to help me cause some trouble. And we're going to talk to you about that today. Um, so one of the things that investors and supporters and a lot of clients have been asking us about is, when can I order K7? When can I order K7? What happened to the K7? When do we get the K7? Um, and the poor sales team has been very annoyed with me because they get a lot of requests and we still are at kind of concept stage. And so I wanted to spend a little bit of time today to talk about you know, what happened from the unveiling of the concept car uh, up until now. And um, I think the the biggest lesson learned as we got into it was, you know, with great sympathy and support for our friends at, at Zooks and Waymo and Cruz, as you've seen, you know, billions and billions of dollars spent. I often quote, you know, Bloomberg's article some time ago. I think they totaled it up more than a hundred billion dollars has gone into self-driving vehicles. Uh, a couple hundred companies working on it and effectively no one shipped anything for years. Um, and part of it is it's kind of hard. It's technically very difficult. And so we found ourselves very quickly going, hmm, we can't actually port over, every, you know, just literally what we have on the K5 and just stick it on the K7 and everything will be fine and just go. Um, so that wasn't a good idea. Uh, then we got our hands full uh, uh, with uh, the K5 and then, you know, multi-million dollar backlog of new orders. So we've been uh, a little busy, but there's a few of us on the team that still really want this K7 out uh, out in the in the real world. Uh, so in our uh, unofficial spare time, I guess, um, we've been toiling away uh, to start making some progress and now have uh, Begun, begun some earnest uh, development on the K7, and I'm gonna preview some of that with you uh, today. So that's a little bit of the the background, you know, crossing fingers if everything goes well this year, uh, hopefully in 2025, we'll begin to actually take pre-orders for the, for the K7, um, which will be able to handle slightly more difficult terrain. So the machines that are in burn-in, uh, testing behind uh, Supreet there we can handle ADA compliant areas, kind of wherever a wheelchair might be able to go. Uh, a little bit of, of rough terrain, but not so much. Uh, and a lot of our clients have either massive corporate campuses or really, really large manufacturing facilities, you know, solar farm, wind farms, power utility substations, you're on gravel, dirt, sand. We're not necessarily going off roading. Uh, with a, a K7, but it's intended to handle slightly more uh, difficult terrain. And so our logic was not to go work on the 35 mile an hour or 75 mile an hour self-driving vehicle uh, from the get-go, was to crawl, walk, run. Uh, so we've proven now that we've operated nearly 3 million hours across, geez, every time zone in America, um, across multiple winters and summers at one to three miles an hour and have reasonable confidence in the technology to start rethinking about uh, how would you go about implementing a strategy for the K7 uh, kind of software stack, navigation stack. Uh, what can we port over that we have uh, in our existing portfolio? What do we have to develop new? Or what innovations have already occurred over all this time that uh, we can leverage. So we're kind of going through all that uh, analysis and then try to get the, the K7 to maybe go a little bit faster, maybe let's say up to 10 miles an hour and uh, get that working before we go uh, work on stuff that's a little bit faster than that. So again, this is the crawl, walk, run approach. We're super excited to stop the crawling and start the walking. And so with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to my uh, teammate, Aaron, who's again, our chief design officer. We're both ex Ford Motor Company. And uh, one of the things I love working with Aaron 
Jeez, Aaron, we've been working now together for 20 Hate plus years. Count. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you've ever watched some of our either uh, phone calls, uh, Slack exchanges or text or whatever, you'd be like, these guys are on a different planet. They have a, their own different language and how they talk about stuff. And uh, in, a, in a crazy way, uh, my job as a CEO of Nightscope is uh, a bit daunting. There's a lot of, uh, what's Elon call them? Uh, chores that need to get done that you really don't want to do. But if you don't do them, like really bad stuff happens. But my uh, biggest delight in uh, in my career here at Nightscope uh, over the last 10 years is getting, in, getting to design stuff, especially with working with Aaron, who somehow has uh, learned enough about me that I always tease him that he can read my mind because I... <laughs> Before I ask him to do something, he's already like, hey, what about this? And <laughs> it's uh, an ongoing joke, but it's it's more than a joke because it's actually real. Uh, mm -hmm. So with that, I'll turn it over to Aaron's going to get us into our virtual design studio that we're going to share with uh, our audience. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me share the screen here. Okay. So here we are in our virtual design center and um, we don't have a real design center. And this is kind of reminiscent of something that you might find at like uh, a large automotive um, design studio. And um, they would have like full size cars and, and clay models of whatever they're working on. And then a lot of like sketchboards that they'd put up, uh, you know, in the room as well. They have wheels on them. You could just kind of like roll them around to wherever you need them. And uh, as we were drawing, we would just pin them up to the walls. And, um, you know, after a while you get a full wall and then you grab some, uh, some of the management and then kind of go through them and start talking about the designs and I, such. I think you know this, Aaron, but you know, one of the, when I was at Ford Motor Company for, uh, for some time, I got, uh, senior enough that I somehow was able to get a, a, my badge to work in all the yeah. design studios. And so what I would do instead of going for a walk outside to decompress or you know, go grab a bite to eat or whatever, my yeah. therapy for dealing with all of madness was literally, I think I would do it almost every two weeks, just go literally walk through the design studios. So inspiring. Yeah. Uh, the smell of clay, the, um, <laughs> remember that one chief designer, uh, Giuseppe? Oh yeah. He'd be singing. He's always singing in, in Italian, <laughs> you know, full on opera going on. Oh yeah. Um, it was, uh, awesome. it was awesome. And I think one of the challenges Aaron and I have had designing the stuff at night scope is I covered earlier in the week. It, none of this stuff has the same proportions as a normal car. So we got a little stuck and super grateful that uh, Aaron built out this digital studio for us to be able to either do it uh, on a call like this or actually put on the VR goggles and um, be able to compare and contrast different sizes and proportions and angles and stuff because it's you know impossible to be able to do this without a reference point. Yeah, yeah, so definitely. Just, just a question. And out of curiosity, like what was the faster design that you guys, you know, actually saw and then that inspired you or probably, you know, after that, like what was the first sketch that you actually designed? Probably this is a question for you, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, it, it goes way back. It's actually when we started the company, we started with something called the K10. And um, that was... Which you saw on the first day video. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> yep. And um, so, yeah, we started the company with that because we were thinking, you know, autonomous cars were all the buzz at the time. This was 2013. And, um, you know, there was a, a, a lot of uh, interest in that, you know, in autonomous vehicles. And we thought, well, we could, you know, do the security technology that we've been dreaming of and put it on a car and have it patrol around. And it'll be then fine. We, it'll be easy. Yeah. That'd be, that'd, yeah. <laughs> nothing wrong with that isn't everything then, yeah except for everything and then we start realizing that yeah it's uh autonomous cars are cool and but they're still kind of like research development kind of stage uh you know kind of like darpa projects at that point 
And um, I mean, it's still, I mean, sad to say it still is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's still not 100% there. And um, so, yeah, so we've always been kind of thinking of this you know, four-wheeled uh, security robot. And um, so, yeah, after we decided that maybe we should slow down, you know, that's kind of where the K5 came about. And then so we kind of put the the K7 on the back burner and the K10 on the back burner. And uh, but we always kind of keep coming back to it. It's like, you know, every every year or so, it's kind of like, oh, I literally there we go again. K7. <laughs> it's, it's the kid's favorite toy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah, but, Bill called me up. He's like, yeah, we got to get this thing going. But the the sketching process, Aaron's very prolific and very fast and uh it's it, it we go through literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sketches yeah and you know if anyone ever watched you know made a reality show of us two working together it's just <laughs> you guys are you guys are nuts yeah but um it, it is actually really fun um but you also sometimes get it wrong because you, you know and i'm I'm definitely more guilty of this than Aaron. Uh, I'll fall in <laughs> love with a sketch and the sketch isn't exactly the right real world proportions. Like the, I don't know, the height of something isn't actually going to look that way in the real world. Yeah. And then we start modeling it or whatever. And then I'm like, that doesn't look anything like that. Like, well, I kind of told you that doesn't. <laughs> yeah. And, we, you know, designers never cheat either a sketch. <laughs> you know, like the I cheat sketch in Ford with the 97 draw. inch wheels. And yeah, like, exactly. You know, three millimeters of ground clearance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That never happens. <laughs> But yeah, it, it, it's kind of fun to joke at that. But, you know, like it, a lot of it has comes down to the, the feeling of the sketch. So, you know, there, there was a, a, a guy at Ford that was famous for like drawing three lines, two wheels and then some chalk to make the, you know, the highlights of what the car is. And you're like, there's no way we can make that, but it looks so cool, let's do it. <laughs> you know, so a lot of it is based on feeling, uh, at least it was at Ford. That was kind of the style at the time when I was there. But yeah, um, it's like that uh, F1 intro video where, you know, just one single line of video keeps changing. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> And, uh, but yeah, it's a lot on feeling. And then, you know, you see something in it that, um, that could be interesting. It's not there yet, but there's a, a spark of something in there. It might be the weirdest looking thing ever, but it's got this one little part that, that looks amazing. And then, so you kind of like start from that and then you just kind of like, um, you know, keep noodling away at it until you come up with something that that's really interesting. So what do we got here? We're in the Night Scope Virtual Design Studio. We got the yep. boards up. We got yeah, some models in there. Let's get going. So yeah, so we're gonna talk about K7, and uh, this is the basically the show car that we did. Um, I believe it we launched it at the end of 2016 or early 2017. And um, basically, we're going to kind of the beginning of the presentation is just kind of where we've been um, and kind of where, um, you know, how we got to this point, at least. And then what we're going to do, you know, going so forward. We sketched that out in 2016. It's 16. 2024. And the actual concept car in real life still looks fresh, which is really hard with a design, right? Yeah, yeah, I you're, yeah. You're we actually, get... you're right next to it. I'm, right? I'm right next to it. If you guys want to see it, I can show you. Yeah, it. Go ahead. yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Let's do that. Let's do that. Yeah, everybody that look at this. comes in to take a look at it is always kind of amazed. By like, what is that? It's like, we're working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Thank you um yeah so let's kind of get into the the sketches of this guy here so in the beginning like bill was saying you know it's kind of hard uh, because um you know there's not a company making these so there's no real reference and it's not really a car and so in the beginning we did kind of struggle a lot with the size uh, do you remember bill that first 
um, prototype that we made of the K7. Oh, jeez. It was literally 2K5. No, before that. Remember, it was 2K5 chassis yes. basically glued together. <laughs> so it was <laughs> literally maybe, I don't know, 60 inches long and 30 inches wide. Or very awkward. Yeah, very, very awkward. awkward. So it was basically a a, a fat K5 <laughs> from what or I like remember. A, you know, a sunfish. I mean, it was. Yeah, yeah, no yeah, no exactly. No good. no good. So we were like, uh, OK, I think we we mocked that up. And then it was like, yeah, we're not going to do that. So I, I don't think we took that very far. You got far. the foam core out, though. We we tried to mock it up and like, yeah, yeah this is. Yeah. Uh, so the one thing I learned uh, being a design intern for so many years like proportion 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 is more Absolutely. important than surface treatment like if you don't have the right bones in place no matter what skin you're going to put on this thing it's never going to look good and yep. so we spent a lot of time trying to get the right uh wheel to body wheelbase kind of front and rear overhangs and tread uh sorted out first then if you've got something solid that you can or Aaron can sketch over, you've got a chance to make something really exciting. Yeah. Um, if you get that wrong, like you're you're getting an ass for the rest of your life. There's no <laughs> way you can't. It's not fixable. You can't yep. fix stupid. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, this sketch, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but this first sketch nope. in the top left no um nope. is kind of the next step after that you know that that stretched k5 so we went with a uh, i think it's called pivot steering chassis so basically like oh, tank skid steer. steering skid steering yeah um so two wheels go one way two wheels go the other way so that it can kind of like uh, move like a tank and we thought oh that's gonna be great it's gonna be you know super simple there's no so steering <laughs> mechanisms <laughs> Until we built one and then yeah. have the thing hopping all over the place. <laughs> yeah, it made the most disgusting noises as it was trying to turn and, and kind of going around. It was so funny. I think we drove it for about 10 minutes and we're like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. interesting uh, research paper, but no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Luckily, it was a really quick build, so we didn't spend too much time on it. But. Um, I think that's the one that we did the foam core thing on as well. So oh, we, yeah, yeah, we yeah. cut out some foam core and kind of got a, uh, a rough proportion model just to see what it was. And I think I remember you pulling, actually pulling your car into the, into KHQ there. Uh, so you could see it with the headlights and uh, as you're looking oh, through the yeah. car. You remember that? Wow, you got a memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I remember, I remember. And you're like, I'm going to run this thing over. It's yeah, like I can't. Small. Where, is, where is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's. I'm going to uh, find that picture. Yeah, that we should. We should. And, so uh, when was this? Was this at the same time? This like was like, No, this was like 2015. I think that's what that sketch says on it. So somewhere around there. And okay. um, all, all my my life my life's work is gonna get rid of the caskers. That's why I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah, I, you know yeah. this this two wheel thing with the caster is gonna drive me crazy. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I use those casters on these sketchboards just to annoy you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I just noticed that. <laughs> Sorry, caster supplier, week. nothing personal. Uh, yeah, nothing personal. <laughs> um, so yeah, so from there. So we dropped that one pretty quick and then we're like, yeah, it's got to be a little bit bigger. Um, so that's when we got onto the um, this next idea of using the holonomic steering. And um, we made the thing also a little bit larger. So I believe we're roughly the same size, it's still fairly small, um, but I think it's around a little bit bigger than a, a like a smart car in size comparison. It, it looks um, big in person indoors. Yeah. Well, you put it outside, it, it shrinks real, real quick. Yeah, you park um, it next to a, a bigger car or something. I, I, I think one thing that I complain about on the auto industry side, but then we go have this situation, it's a completely different problem. So the auto industry side, like you have uh, one of the big problems I we used to deal with or, you know, the industry still dealing with. You've got all these regulatory requirements. you got like the bumper has to go here. The engine's going to have to go here because of physics and safety and this, that and the other thing. And you don't have a lot of flexibility to make the design, you know, 
different than anyone else's. But with the electric vehicle architecture and having all the batteries at the bottom, like you have a massive amount of flexibility to do some really, really cool uh, designs. And only a, you know, a couple of companies have decided to take uh, advantage of that architectural freedom, I'll call it, which is really frustrating because it's like, this is one of the most annoying things for a designer or engineer in the automotive industry is having to deal with all these constraints. Now a bunch of them are gone and you end up doing the same thing you did before. It's like, geez, okay. But in our case, we don't have any of those constraints. And then you get the complete opposite problem, which is you've got, it's too wide open. Like you have almost no constraints other than, you know, the autonomy team shows up with the, the sensors and, and stuff that need to get placed in certain locations. But that's, you know, relatively speaking, a modest uh, set of requirements. And so now that's why a lot of these sketches look very wild and very different as we go through them, because you don't have to have you know, certain things at certain heights or certain locations, uh, which makes this fun, but also a little difficult. Yeah. yeah. No, also like imagine adding rear view mirrors for that cool design. <laughs> yeah. <Apparently, no. laughs> yep. Yep. And bumpers and everything. And bumpers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, the one, the second one on the, uh, the first one on the second row there has the two little, uh, flags i've been ag yeah <laughs> nagging you about last week <laughs> yep yep i brought that one out for you <laughs> yeah so yeah so when we were designing this as bill said we don't have any or not many constraints um so the the hard thing is trying to make a a, a nice looking proportion um but we also want to have some height to it because as as i mentioned earlier bill was you know driving or parking his car next to one and you want to make sure you see it if this thing's going to be in a parking lot yeah con conspicuity is actually a a, a requirement yeah and, uh actually both from a kind of just normal safety standpoint but also from a public safety standpoint just mm -hmm. for anyone wanting to do harm um you know getting it easily seen and heard uh can can help with that commanding presence yeah definitely definitely and um yeah so we we kind of the things that we struggle with is yeah getting the height um for that proportion it's a small car and you don't want it to look like a minivan you know nobody likes minivans right <laughs> so you don't want a minivan you don't want it too tall um and uh you, so you want to drive front wheel drive is not how god intended things to move right? exactly so that problem. exactly <laughs> um so those were kind of the biggest thing and the wheels uh with this particular design we went with a holonomic steering which you'll see in a little video that's uh, gonna play in a minute but um the wheels basically can turn you know completely sideways and the thinking drive you know forward or sideways you know diagonally all over the place um so if you can imagine there's like a a, a wheel for each uh, or sorry a motor for each wheel and then on top of that the the wheel there's another motor that turns it um so that kind of gives us and, a and only a little bit of software to yeah <laughs> to deal with that shot <laughs> easy, easy one for supreme <laughs> well, there he is yeah yeah so eight <laughs> motors to control basically <laughs> and um <laughs> uh so yeah so the once you got that stack up of all the motors and things um the wheels started looking a little bit small on some of these sketches kind of like a like a roller skate and um so we played with some other ideas of maybe just huge wheels you know just go full-on designer mode and put the big wheel on or um try some different like wheel covers and that kind of thing just to kind of keep the proportion looking a little bit more normal and um so those are kind of the main things that we struggle with and the other thing too is um i want to try and hide a lot of the sensors as much as i can um like you'll notice on some of these there's a lot of graphic elements that are dark or have like a, a black stripe or band kind of uh so those are kind of areas where i like to try to like incorporate some of the right, well i think it's probably threefold right you're visually trying to hide the sensors so it doesn't kind of mess up the flow mm -hmm. but then you don't want people you know the humans kind of 
poking at stuff. Vandalize. Um, yeah. And yeah. then, exactly. and then there's the curious. elements of dirt and rain and stuff accumulating that also is something to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, what about the sensor suite? For example, from the first version of the design uh, to the uh, concept car. So, what were the sensors that were, you know, like uh, added? Uh, probably come up with the autonomy frame. Yeah, yeah, we used a lot of of the 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 puck lidars. Um, puck so lidars. I think we had one on the top, and then one in the front, one on the rear, and one on the bottom. So that was most of it. So it was a lot of expensive. Kind of expensive. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's Don't another problem. <laughs> this is an exercise in what not to do. Exactly. And, um, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Or I'm lidar. How my bad. pen over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no writing. Um, yeah. So mostly uh, the big lidars and then uh, proximity sensors around the perimeter of it. Okay. Is what we we're looking at. Yeah. At the time, we didn't really get into any camera vision. Or that kind of thing. Oh, you but, put the uh, cameras around the the puck, I think. Yeah, puck. we had cameras for um, for our KSOC, you know, so you could see through the robot, but not for navigation necessarily. Yeah, I have seen, I have seen, I can see four cameras. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny. the 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 biggest one that we have has the smallest cameras. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, so yeah, so that was basically the sensor stack on these guys. Okay. All right. Um, so from the sketches, we just kind of went in. Um, uh, you know, we found a sketch that we liked, which is kind of similar to the one in the the bottom right there. And from there, kind of the process is start build a uh, um, a three D model. Uh, you can just start with something very rough digital model. And, yeah, digital model. Sorry, yeah. And um, we start with something rough just to get an idea of that proportion and size. And um, it's still tough in the computer because you see it on your screen and it's only this big. So to imagine it, um, you know, in real life is a little bit diff difficult. I think at this point we didn't have it yet, um, but recently we started using like VR goggles and things like that, where you can put the goggles on and then the model is there. It looks like it's really in front of you and you can get a lot better uh, sense of those kinds of things. It's um, actually very a very very cool experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty cool to be able to see you know what you're working on in full size, because um, you know like at, at at the automotive companies you would get to that stage where you want to see it in full size. You would mill it out in clay, and it would be like several weeks of work and to just to be able to see it. And then once you start seeing it, you're like, oh boy, it looks a lot different than what you saw on the computer. So then yeah. you start changing it manually by hand, and that's it's it's a long process, um, but you're seeing it in real time as it's moving around, which is nice. But and you've got one, two, or three clay modelers working yeah, on that team. for weeks on end, mm -hmm. and sometimes I remember for one vehicle program, uh, I had like twelve of them. I want to. I think the Thunderbird. It, oh uh, yeah, they had several different. It's like almost a dozen of them, mm -hmm. and like different uh, decades of what it could look like. <laughs> yeah, I won't name the executive, but there was uh, a famous incident where you know the team spent a bunch of time, you know, hand crafting this beautiful clay model, and he didn't like it, and so he put his foot into it, literally, picked the clay, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, okay, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good way to handle this, but um, yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't, uh, we've never done a clay model at Nightscope, right? Um, we've done a little tiny one. <laughs> oh, that's right. You did one. You Actually, did one. I think of that first sketch in the top left, we did a tiny little model of that. Yep. And then I think we scanned it and then built that was a it. 3D <laughs> model of it. Yeah. yeah it's it was, in one of the conference rooms. Yeah. Same yeah. Days. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you know what you know what we're talking about. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That was the only clay we've done. All right. Um, so what's next? So yeah. So let's move on here. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna look at a, a video of kind of how this guy moves around. So here you can see the wheels have turned themselves sideways, so it could drive uh, drive sideways. 
And then it also gives you like four wheel steering uh, so it can turn in a real tight radiuses. You can see both wheels turning. And then the other cool thing about it is um, it can basically just spin on a dime. So it can do front wheels 45 degrees and the rear wheels 45 degrees and it'll just kind of like spin in place. And uh, I always think when I see the wheel covers we put on this thing, is uh, my dad had taken me to Times Square to watch the, uh, now I'm going to really date myself, uh, Tron, the movie oh, yeah. from way back when. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those wheels, I don't know why, but that really reminds me of, uh, yeah, of the Tron days. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Yeah, so this is just another view of the 3D model. Um, we can just kind of let it roll, but we've all kind of seen it. But um, but yeah, thinking forward from here now, um, you know, what lessons have we learned from this? Um, so the 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 things that we like about it is that, you know, it's it's very futuristic and it's it's clean and it's um you know got a a cool look and an aesthetic that that people tend to like and um so that's something we want to kind of carry forward that same kind of um uh maybe form language you might say um but things about it too we don't want to do like this one is is pretty complex too many parts too many parts yeah. yeah so it's got a front and a rear and a hoop and a couple of fenders and a bottom and their side pods and there's no real access for um you know maintenance that kind of thing this is pre just pretty much purely a show car uh so we just kind of went for you know the wild crazy and stuff. and as much as i love those wheel covers kind of yeah. not too practical it's cool for a concept car but you know i'm yeah. not gonna put that in production yeah and the lights like the lenses for those wheels and the lens and the hoop you don't want to know how much those cost <laughs> yeah, I, I, exactly. <laughs> plus the four lidars that Supreme yeah is and not going to do yeah. <laughs> and the eight motors and the eight motors <laughs> yep, yeah yep so with all that in mind uh we start looking towards the future of our you know the current project that we're working on and you know what can we learn from this and what have we learned you know from going through all the process with uh, the the latest k5 as well uh, i've been working a lot with tyler and um who's our head of the production and um he's really good at it at looking at things and saying you know that's really hard to build what can we do different you know so we're, we're going to work closely with him on this as well and uh you know try and get something that's easy i told to him just 3d print the whole thing it'll be fine yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah he loves the idea that we like to tease him <laughs> but um but yeah so yeah lots to, lots to think of going forward um so, so uh, there's another sketch board there oh yeah this was another concept wasn't really gonna talk too much about it but this was another concept i think you call it the the canoe on the roof design <laughs> but um, there there was an idea we were kicking around but you um, knew exactly what i meant right yes i sent you a message i'm like yeah what yeah. about the one with the canoe on the roof i didn't have to explain anything else you knew exactly no. what i meant <laughs> yep yeah that's true what was the inspiration for this by the way like why canoe on the roof um, so there was an idea we were kicking around where maybe we have different versions of it. So the, the bottom, the, you know, the, the bottom part could maybe be the same for three different kinds and we could change the top part, uh, depending on what kind of deployment it was at. So like for the first one, you know, maybe it's, it just needs, um, just needs the the surveillance option basically so it just has cameras and sensors and that kind of thing uh but maybe where there's another version that has more storage area like you could put like uh, uh, uh emergency yeah. kits defibrillators that kind of thing like if it was you know out on patrol and somebody needed some help maybe a hatch could open that kind of thing and then um maybe this guy is more of a like a you know a faster version that, 
doesn't need as much, you know, looking more at aerodynamics and things. Need, need so, some uh, cool capacity. Don't forget the drone capacity. Yeah, the drone capacity. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so yeah, so this guy. Um, oh, we forgot. Had a, hold on, hold on. How we forgot to yeah. tell Supreme. So there, the vehicle is gonna go, you know, at speed, right? And then mm -hmm. gonna deploy the drone while it's moving, right? And then when it's done surveilling or whatever and getting the aero reconnaissance, it's gonna have to dock while the machine's moving. And you're gonna have to calculate the exact trajectory based on the speed to make sure it docks properly and recharges. So ho hopefully you're all good with that. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Easy um, one. I think I lost the Zoom connection. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it, SpaceX dropped or you know, landed a rocket on the drone ship. Like, what's the problem? Yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting problem, though. Very interesting problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be fun. Yeah. Would be but, fun to work on it. Definitely. Yeah. The yeah. QA engineer would kill us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jerry's going to definitely kill us. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So, yeah, so this guy was, um, you know, a little bit more off-road in, in nature. Um, and maybe not off-road per se, but, you know, off uh, like gravel. Or a little more rugged. Thing. Yeah. A little more rugged. Mm -hmm. um, you know, off pavement kind of situation, like kind of maybe border patrolish. Yeah, it goes around a board, along the border or along the perimeter of a, um, uh, like an airport, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, like you, like Bill was mentioning, this round circle here was like the drone port. Oh, so see, the, you thought I was playing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the the lid would open and the drones would come out so you could get a little bit higher view of, of whatever situation you happened to park at. And um yeah, just oh, a, by the way, when was this from? Like what year? Um this was more recent, like uh maybe a year ago. We were kind of 20, what's it, twenty four, twenty three, twenty twenty two. Twenty two. Two. Yeah, twenty two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The the yearly bill nagging Aaron like we yeah. need to get this thing built <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah it's fun I mean, yeah just to, to get back onto these projects it's a lot of fun it's cool to see him you know develop over the years yes so jumping away from there we're going to start thinking about uh, where we're going next and I'll let uh, Saprith talk about this guy here which is our our new chassis. Yeah, all right. So, yep, based on all the things that we have learned so far from, you know, what we have done on the concept car, we wanted to be very realistic on this chassis. So right now with this, so uh, the chassis has two options. So we can go with four wheel drive or two wheel drive. So specifically, as we said already, four wheel drive it's for you know like rugged terrain uh, more challenging terrains uh, uh, inclinations or you know like different kinds of weather conditions and everything but at the same time we can always switch it back to uh, two wheel where it is more energy efficient and also like gives us more it is more ideal for you know like smoother uh, surfaces and in urban environments so that's one thing we have chosen on this uh, chassis uh, and there you can see me, draw, you know, walking in front of it, where it uh, and this one autonomously you got, stop. This one Go you've ahead. got the autonomous stack actually running, right? This one, yes. So uh, the alpha stage, I actually got the you know, uh, autonomy stack running. So uh, uh, I want to give a little preview on, you know, what I have done in this one. So uh, we actually learned everything from uh, fifth generation K5 and we wanted to upgrade it to a level up. You know, it's called like a level up uh, from ROS 1 is what we have been running. And then we upgraded it to ROS 2 uh, uh, on this one. Uh, let me ROS pause 2. you there because some of the audience is not going to know this. So there's um, uh, a robot operating system which, you know, manages, uh, I, if I remember correctly, ROS 1 is probably on three quarters of the robots in the world or something crazy like that. Um, and that's kind of the basic operating system for... Uh, a lot of the software code that runs these uh, machines. 
And then over time, uh, there's a little bit of a jump to move from ROS 1 to ROS 2 if, if you want to go down that path. Um, and that's what uh, Supreet is alluding to. Yeah, and also like ROS2 is way more secure and it has a lot of uh, visibility and also like the behaviors can be controlled very easily in terms of software and as well as, you know, in terms of the features. Uh, and also it's very easy to integrate, you know, on the go for also scalability. So let's say, you know, like right now it's in alpha. So uh, uh, down the lane, we will have, uh, you know, maybe more than 100 or 200 of these. Uh, so it would be very easy for us to scale and add one or two extra features if we want to, you know, like keep changing or iterating uh, by learning on uh, what we have seen, just like, uh, you know, what on the what we learned on the K7 concept. Um, and one of the things, uh, uh, as you have already seen, K7 concept has four LiDARs, this has only one. And uh, <laughs> Bill already loves it, yes. Uh, <laughs> Man, those are expensive, you know, it's thousands it of dollars is. for each LiDAR. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it doesn't really make sense because, you know, like we have our private, uh, you know, like a set of space where we will be running it uh, in a petrol zone, you know, like marking it as a petrol zone. So we will be running at 10 miles or maximum 15 miles of speed. So uh, we won't be reaching 40 or 50, at least with this version. So uh, it does make sense to have, you know, very lesser number of these sensors, which will cover uh, uh, all the uh, 360 degree, you know, like uh, field of view, pretty much, you know, like uh, cutting down all the blind spots. Uh, on that note, to cut down all the blind spots, we have added uh, more sensors to it uh, by fusing them with the navigation stack, like ultrasonic, radars, cameras, uh, lighters, of course. So, so uh, it gives us, uh, and also of course GPS, so it gives us more uh, uh, advantage and then like a better uh, navigation capability when compared to, uh, uh, you know, the fifth generation, which we have learned, uh, or, you know, studied by far. And I want to also say like at some, uh, you know, gradually we want to adapt this uh, software stack onto the version five so that we can have better improved navigation even on the uh, lesser speed version of, uh, you know, like uh, two way to uh, robots that we uh, And for the for the audience's benefit, can you explain a little bit something that we're evaluating? We haven't decided if we're going to go down this path, but uh, what the heck is AutoWare? <laughs> so me being a roboticist, I love open source stuff. So uh, you don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? Like which you already have. Let's, uh, you know, like uh, utilize something's already out there and then make it better so we can also like uh, help the community. So one thing that we are uh, uh, exploring is AutoWare. It's uh, it's developed from, uh, I think, one of the uh, uh, Japanese universities, Nagoya universities, and uh, uh, it's a very good open source tool uh, adapted uh, or using uh, ROS2. Uh, uh, so we have been evaluating it for our uh, uh, navigation stack uh, so uh, it has pretty much uh, you know some of the components that we want and then we are trying to build on top of it uh, and then in the evaluation stage so if it holds good like uh, we will try to add more uh, customized behaviors uh, implement more uh, uh, AI based you know like uh, uh, scenario management and then uh, uh, every other cool stuff that we would want to see to avoid uh, this specific uh, case of event um, from, you know, uh, doing anything. So a shorthand way to describe AutoWare, would you agree that it's a bunch of car guys and car gals got together, looked at Ross 2 and like, hmm, I wonder if we could repurpose this for autonomy for self-driving vehicles and provide an open source uh, package for developers to like you said, not reinvent the wheel. Is that is that the right way to think about it? That's exactly the right way to think about it. You know, like a bunch of automotive guys, a uh, bunch of researchers came together and they were like, oh, we have all these algorithms. We have all these everything, you know, like uh, software stacks separate. Why don't we bring it all together to make it one huge thing for uh, the autonomous cars? That is exactly but, right. But I think now that you we've done enough homework there's some stuff that we can, if we want to go down this path, leverage um, moving to ROS2 slash AutoWare here 
but it's a huge gap between that and then being able to run as a night scope uh asr exactly there's a bunch yeah. of stuff that doesn't exist here no that we've built over the last 10 years that's proprietary to us that's not available uh out in the in the wild and so yep. now you got to figure out the delta of like how am i gonna either port this over or rewrite this and but i need this functionality otherwise this doesn't work for our clients is that is that right that is exactly right so uh any open source comes with uh you know a good baseline so i'm gonna take that baseline and then and add what is night scope stuff like, like we want to make it night scope by you know making it more uh, uh you know like uh, client uh, uh required uh, or like the specifications that we need so just a small example would be like we want this case event to be patrolling going and then uh, uh, docking uh, for a small while so that it can go back again to uh, uh you know like uh, patrol so charge patrol is just one example so just to do that it's a behavior change so we want to implement that and also for doing that while doing that or while patrolling we also want to send live video to clients so they can actually see the uh, you know like what is happening in their environment uh, uh, in the client location uh, that also requires the communication between uh, you know like uh, our case hawk tool as well as our uh, robot uh, right so like so, the patrol scheduler doesn't exist right now if if the client wants to go on our the case ox the night scope security operation center this is the user interface that's uh, browser based that as long as you got credentials and uh, internet connection and a browser you're good to go and you can control uh when these machines patrol you know, weekdays versus weekends, night shift versus day shift, et cetera. And you can say, okay, I want uh, to do route A for this time, route B for this, not route C for that. Okay, well, how are you gonna get that to communicate to the machine and make sure the machine actually does what the user wants? You know, mm -hmm. that's not something that you just get somewhere, right? <laughs> no, no, that's proprietary from Nightscope. Like we have it, uh... Uh, you know, developed uh, for fifth generation K5, and then we have to develop that for K7. So those are the cool stuff, you know, like uh, it's still pending, the night scope stuff. So uh, we're gonna add those. Very cool. One thing about AI that I wanted to ask you, um, so there's, there's some technical debt on some of the night scope stuff that was written back in, I don't know, 2016 and the author perhaps is no longer on the team maybe it was a little clunky the way the code was written or you know we've you know we've now cleaned this up but you know just sometimes we found uh usernames and passwords inside of code you know really bad no good or uh poor use of global variables and that and the like um do you think uh in some cases, if we had uh, our private version of ChatGPT or the like, we can just upload uh, our code and have a, kind of a co-pilot session to clean up the old code, frankly, um, to either help rewrite it or uh, or kind of <laughs> disinfect it before we want to put it into the next generation product. Like, how do you think about that? I mean, uh, that's a very good point. <laughs> Let me start with that because, uh, uh, I mean, as everybody knows, we have gone through the federal, you know, like uh, FedRAMP security and all those, uh, you know, cool approvals. Like right now, we don't want to be uh, in a situation where we have the uh, passwords in the uh, code itself. Yes. So to clean up that, yeah, I do agree that, you know, having a, a private version of, uh, you know, any uh, large language models, you know, like train it, like the AI models uh, where we can customize it so we can actually remove that chunk and then like rewrite, add a different method over there. That's a very, you know, like uh, uh, time saving and as because, I mean, uh, <laughs> I just want to give a small idea of uh, we might have around like uh, just in one small software stack we might have around like uh, hundred thousand or two hundred thousand lines of code 
so we don't want the engineers to jump in and then like oh is this where i have password okay let me change that that's going to take an entire you know like few months like doesn't make any sense so now that we have ai so we can actually you know utilize that in a very uh, proper fashion and then like uh, implement that yes the so short so answer, I, the answer I, is I, yes so i i think a lot of folks focus on ai in terms of outward or client facing stuff as i spoke to mercedes about uh yesterday um but there is a lot a lot of benefit of using ai for internal development it's literally you know you can end up getting a 2x 3x you know 4x improvement in productivity because you've got this amazing tool uh to me able to work smarter smarter faster and cheaper yeah 100%. Cool. So what's uh what's next guys? Okay. We will jump ahead here. So congrats to Preet, you got a running prototype that's actually autonomous for the K7 and I know for some of our uh supporters that's uh breaking news that'll make them uh uh hopefully a, a bit happy and and put a smile on their face. We're working on it. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. And also like one more thing that I want to add everything is 3D navigation related. Like everything is 3D over there. Like mapping is 3D, the navigation is the localization is 3D. Yeah. Good thing. Uh yeah, so uh besides, you know, things shouldn't run front wheel drive. Sorry, that's my opinion. Um <laughs> especially if you're driving. Um I I think, you know, there's certain uh setups in terms of navigation where to to be more efficient or at the time we didn't have um enough of uh technical <laughs> and compute capabilities uh some of the stuff's running on uh, effectively 2D navigation and that's you know really not good um so that's one of the things that we're wanting to improve significantly here by moving everything into 3D and oh you didn't even talk about the uh, use of AI and and in simulation tools you want to cover that just real quick before we jump into this Yeah sure so uh one of the things I, uh, as i said earlier like we are exploring autoware autoware also has a segment on uh, a simulation it comes uh, so we can utilize uh, the simulation uh, pre-built simulation stack where we can uh, use it for scenario uh, development for example uh, we can create our own scenarios like uh, how would the robot so we can take the a uh, snapshot of the client location and then we can implement it on the simulation without even jumping on the hardware and uh, in that situation we can try to implement uh, uh, certain behaviors on the human like we can model humans uh, and then we can model certain cars or trucks or whatever and then uh, we can have our case of event in that uh, specific claim and then uh, it can actually do the behavior uh, we can test the behavior of that case event over there so that's going to be very advantageous uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know like saving a lot of uh, testing costs and uh, saving a lot of uh, resources uh, and the hardware uh, cost as well uh, do you, i'll put you on the spot do you think we could use simulation once we're all done can we use that simulation to improve the deployment engineering process to actually get the machines out the door and deployed that's uh, Uh, I would want to say like yes technically speaking yes uh we can actually model the environment and then we can train the deployment team and uh, they can deploy the robot over there uh, as a real time uh, thing that we can do and then uh, uh you know that's going to be like a pre deployment step and then that's that's always better than you know like uh, putting the deployment engineers on spot like okay just go on the site survey like that's not always good uh, yeah, so we could do the online or remote site survey that we do today yeah then we do the uh actual physical on site survey with our 150 item crazy checklist the things that we have to do then in theory you could do the simulation simulation deployment then yep. ship it then do the deployment so add a step but make this step go faster yeah make the so make the step actually go faster 
Cool, cool. All right, Aaron, obviously you didn't get the memo here. I see two LIDARs on one of these guys. <laughs> yeah, that was an older one. <laughs> Try to sneak it by, yeah. I can always use an extra. You're pulling a, a fast yeah. one on the on the theme here. It says which one is the K7 production design? Ooh. Uh, who's got any guesses? <laughs> I I like all the designs. Oh my okay. god, like uh, especially the one in the uh, especially, especially the second one from the left side, second one. That looks that super cool. cool. And also the right top one. Oof. <laughs> There's a, I won't name which sketch here, but there's one of these that, um, what we were talking about before, my, uh, one of my fatal flaws of falling in love with the sketch and then realizing like, oh, it's not that tall. <laughs> that becomes a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Once you start modeling it. You yeah, get a rude yes. awakening real bad. Like at two in the morning, Aaron sends something over and I'm like, uh oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a problem. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, it's always good to, you know, once you get an idea that you like, to kind of do a real quick model of it uh, in the right proportion and size, and then stand back and look at it next to something else that you know of. So, like next to our current K7 or next to our current K5. Or A Aaron did a model one and then put it next to the K5 V5, the machine that's behind you, Supri, and it looks so tiny versus the V5. I'm like, Ugh, yeah, no. not gonna work. <laughs> and, and whose fault is that, may I add? I, I don't know. I can, sorry, the Zoom connection is messed up. I gotta go, bye. <laughs> don't steal my life. <laughs> uh but yeah. not not an easy not an easy process but no. one of the big uh assignments out of the alpha prototype build um supreet that you're doing is obviously getting the the sensor placement the low cost uh viable uh sensor array of what we want the next generation uh, autonomy stack to look like obviously with pietro and nick and everyone else's involvement and then uh once we get that from you then we can uh start doing some uh additional modeling and then go literally back to the back to the drawing board yep yep and like like i mentioned earlier too you know a lot of these things are all about feeling as well so that sketch that you like you know we can develop it maybe into something that's more practical a little bigger that kind of thing or not you know we might try go down that road and say oh uh, yeah it didn't work so then you you know you start over and keep going it's kind of the, and, the process of design really and it's also uh a little bit of market research marketing mm -hmm. you know how is a client going to react to you know a certain demeanor of a vehicle of you know do we want it to actually look a lot more rugged than these designs do we want more influence from jeep or do we want it to be very utilitarian and you know, quote unquote boring because it's quote unquote for municipalities and it doesn't need to stand out or do you want a drop dead gorgeous design with unbelievable proportions and surface treatment so that you get the gotta have it design and every, I don't know, making st stuff up, but every HOA and every mayor in this, you know, country is going to want one. And do you make it, you know, so attractive that y you really want this in your community? So those are some other things to consider while you're sketching besides the proportions and sensor array and uh, and kind of the, the technical aspects of uh, of the upfront product development process. Yep. Yep, definitely. Yeah, it's it's a lot of things to juggle and then, you know, get the sensors in there and everything else too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think we learned really early on, it's easy to make a robot look like Terminator and, you know, you don't want that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> these things are... oh, we need all these in matte black, make all yeah. these red and glow, you know, like this. Exactly. Little some some thumping, scary Darth Vader sounds. I, mean, yep. I think oh. we're, we got a winner. Yeah, and I mean, it's even kind of subtle, like on the left hand side, the middle one there, uh, you know, the whole front end is black and 
I think you made a comment is that, well, maybe that's too scary, you know, for what we're looking at. And, um, you know, it's, 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 we just need to balance it, you know, something that's not going to be off putting to someone that's, you know, yeah. So in the, the 2025, 2026 time frame, is that few, uh, what was the thing we always used to talk about design stretch? Mm -hmm. Like how far into the future do you want the design to be so that you've got a product development cycle time and when it launches, it's still, it can't be stale and needs to look fresh and then it needs to look fresh for X or Y number of years. Yep. And that's all art, no science. It's like really hard to figure out how something's going to age. Um, Yep. There's one particular automaker in Detroit that, you know, has spent a lot of time trying to make things look a little bit more advanced or cutting edge or what have you. And when they unveil the concept car or the production vehicle, it actually looks really fresh. And then, you know, three, four, five, six years later, it looks extremely dated and doesn't mm -hmm. age well. And th that's another facet that's really hard about design. Yep yeah definitely and i mean we don't really have the budget to do a facelift every year like uh you know an automotive company might do as well so yeah we really got to push the design a little bit further um to, to, to accommodate that yeah. well exciting exciting times guys um um ecstatic we're finally uh working on this in earnest and i know i'm gonna get a bunch of grief from some of the teammates for us working on this because we got our hands full with a, a bunch of other stuff. But uh, hopefully, uh, you know, stay tuned and we'll keep you up to date on uh, all the work Supreet and the team are are gonna uh, get done in the coming weeks and months. And uh, soon maybe whatever's under that blue tarp there uh we might we might uh, give you a sneak peek in the in the future sounds good exciting times that's right. awesome <laughs> thanks guys all right take care bye-bye bye-bye